What I wanted to talk to you about today is that I recently launched a children's book called Scaredy Caterpillar together with a co-author, wonderful gentleman named Keith Malinsky. Um, so Keith Malinsky is a writer of children's books and what we did is we kind of interpreted my book, Dying to Be Me, my first book, Dying to Be Me, into a children's um, format, language, and made it very easily understandable for kids. So what inspired me to want to put out a children's book? Um, I've noticed that I often say, oh, why didn't I know this as a child? Why wasn't I taught this as a child? I say that very often about all the things I learned during my near-death experience and all the, a lot of the things that life taught me because it seems that when we go to school, what we learn in many cases is the opposite of what we actually need to know that will serve us. In other words, I realized that my imagination was one of my most valuable assets, but when you're in school, you're actually told, like, stop daydreaming, pay attention, focus, and you are, you are actually rewarded for rote learning and for not using your imagination and for listening to instructions and not thinking out of the box. So basically, you learn to do the opposite of what will actually serve you in life. Um, and it was only like after I had the near-death experience, I realized how constrained I had been my whole life and that my intuition was real. I thought that that was crazy. Like my intuition was very, very strong, but I never embraced it. I didn't even trust it. Now I do. I trust my intuition over anything else. Um, there's a number of other things that I wish I knew. I wish I always knew that the other, what we call the other realm or the other side of the veil is actually right here. Just because we can't see it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But if kids are taught all this from a young age, if they're taught that they are sensitive souls, that they can sense these things, um, then actually they're born with, with this intuition and sensitivity, but they will never lose it. And this is the problem. We lose it as we grow up. And so people ask me, how do I encourage my child not to lose it? Or how do I help my child not to lose it? Uh, so these are the reasons why I was inspired to work with Keith Malinsky uh, on this book. And Keith is a brilliant children's book writer and um, helped me to transfer or transcribe the concepts from dying to be me in a way that's palatable for kids. And I loved what we created together. I actually really love it and I feel passionate about it. And I feel every kid should read it because it opens you up to the other world. It opens you up and it makes you realize that it's real, it's not your imagination. Um, it will also particularly help kids who have lost loved ones, like if, if a child has lost a parent or a grandparent, it will help them understand that they haven't gone anywhere, that they have just changed form. And it uses the analogy of a caterpillar turning into butterfly. Um, but one of the things I love about this book is that it was illustrated by Roel Cancia and his illustrations are brilliant. So um, I just fell in love with the illustrations. They're just darling. Um, and in this book, it's about a little caterpillar who we have actually named Anita. And she is very afraid of everything. And, um, and, and then one day, she's kind of falling off a tree. And I think I'm, uh, this is a spoiler alert. The caterpillar is falling, falling off a tree. And this butterfly swoops down and catches her so to break her fall. And then takes her on a little journey above the world and and this little girl this little caterpillar girl has been afraid of everything her whole life because she's been bullied as a child and one day her father just disappeared and she never knew where he went he was there one day and he was gone the next and so she lived her life in fear and so she was hiding up in this tree because she was scared of everything and so when she fell and this this butterfly broke her fall and took her on this journey. And she was saying, 
where am I? What's, what is this? And the butterfly is explaining to her that um, we are above the world that you live in. And he's pointing out to her the world down there. And then when he eventually lands her safely on the ground and he starts to fly away, she says, she says, wait, you didn't tell me your name. And he says, you used to call me father. And, um, and, and see, I get tearful even when I say that because I got goosebumps because that means my dad is here. Um, her dad it had turned into a butterfly and that's why he had disappeared. Basically, she never saw him again. And, but this butterfly was still always watching over her and caught her when she was falling. And her dad, the butterfly, then yelled, uh, shouted back at her as he flew away. He said, I have never left you. I'm always watching over you. So just go and live your life fearlessly. And, uh, and, and that's what she then goes on to do. And she realizes we don't die. We just change form. And those of us that have gone before us are still watching over us. So that's basically the moral of the story. I just gave you the spoiler, but <clears throat> hopefully you, you'll be tempted to introduce it to the children in your life. And speaking of children, I want to say that children are extremely sensitive. And some of the things that we can do to help them, apart from letting them foster their imagination and their intuition and telling them that it's not your imagination, it's real, um, and and never ever shaming them for saying things like they have imaginary friends or they're, or they're intuiting things. Never ever shame them for that. But the other piece I want to say is that never shame children for being sensitive. If they cry easily or if they are bullied and it really hurts and affects them, they need to know that it's okay to be sensitive and to feel that way. They need to be hugged. I mean, they need, it, and, and it's fine to tell them things like, the bully is coming from a place of pain, and the bully is actually hurting more than you are, and that's why they're acting out. And it's fine to tell them things like that. But at the same time, don't diminish the sensitivity and the pain of the child who is feeling the sensitivity, the fear, the bullying, all of the things. Um, I remember my entire life always chastising myself for being sensitive and always beating myself up for, for feeling sensitive and always believing that it was something I needed to work on eliminating or beating out of me. I needed to become less sensitive. And I realized today, I realize now, that's not the issue. The issue is not that I need to be less sensitive. The issue is that I never embraced my sensitivity. I never actually said, it's OK to be really sensitive. I am a really sensitive person. I am affected by other people's energies and other people's emotions and the planet. And I have to figure out a way to navigate this world as a sensitive person and to protect my sensitivity and my energy and to nurture myself. But, but the thing is about loving and embracing it and, and being protective over my emotions and my sensitivity as opposed to chastising it and thinking it's something I need to get over. And when I started to do that, half the problem was gone. The next part was, OK, now how do I navigate as a sensitive person? But it became easier once I embraced that I am a sensitive person. So just think about all the times that we have been told, don't be so sensitive, man up, grow a thicker skin. And oh, you're so sensitive, and we feel it's something wrong with us. We feel ashamed of it. Stop feeling ashamed of your sensitivity. Because here's what I believe. I believe that this world lacks sensitivity. It really does. We need more sensitivity and empathy in this world. It truly lacks it. And that is the problem with the world. The problem is not that you are too sensitive. The problem is that too many people are not sensitive enough. So why would we eliminate the ones who are sensitive? So if you have a sensitive child, just hug them and say, it's a beautiful thing to be sensitive. But a lot of the world may not be ready for you, but that's OK. One day they'll catch up to you. 
That's what you need to tell your kids, not stop being so sensitive. It's more like one day everyone else will catch up. The world may not be ready for someone like you yet, but it's okay. There's more and more of us, and we can still, um, we can still connect and stick with each other. And I love being here, despite the fact that sometimes the world can get a bit tough. I actually love being in this world. And so if you have a sensitive child, the most important thing is to help the child find joy. That is the most important thing. That's the most important thing I have found I need to do for myself. And I'll tell you why. Because sensitive people feel pain faster than they feel joy. They tend to feel the pain of the world. They tend to feel um, everybody's sorrow. And they tend to, be, they tend to want to be on, in the front lines helping everyone who has pain. And they don't feel comfortable until everybody feels better. But what they do is they forget that they too are feeling the pain of everyone else and they forget to take care of themselves. The best thing you can do for a sensitive person or a sensitive child or for yourself if you are extremely sensitive is to focus, focus, focus on finding joy. Because being there for other people's pain is something you do without thinking. It's a given. You don't need to focus on that. You're going to do that anyway. <clears throat> but what you do need to do is focus on the joys that life brings you. And you do that by being grateful for the good things that are coming your way that, or that come your way. And that's what I do all the time. So help your kids to focus on the joy. Do that for yourself. But don't ever, ever shame sensitive people because we need more of that. Um, I'm going to ask Abby if we have any comments or people that want to share anything. Or if you have any burning questions, but please keep them on point. Um, Abby, you're welcome to share now. And I'll repeat the question because I have the mic. We have so many beautiful comments. Um, a lot of people saying that our kids can actually teach us more about the other side if we listen to them than we probably know. I love that. So we have so many beautiful comments. And our kids can probably teach us about the other side if we listen to them. I agree so much. And this is why it's so important not to beat the spirit out of our kids. And then a lot of people saying we need spiritual tools for our kids. Yes. In the sense of teaching them sensitivity, teaching them. And then people are saying this book is great for adults as well. Yes, it is. I didn't want to say, but it is. <laughs> it is. Um, and then there was one question. It was a while ago on Instagram, but it was something along the line. Of how do you help children wade through fear when it comes to like imagine things on the other side, monsters under the bed, or and I think it's going back to your teaching of joy piece as well. So. Yes. So the question was, how do you help children move through fear uh, of imaginary things to do with the other side, like monsters under the bed and so on? So yes, it is exactly that the way to move through fear is to have them focus on the joy. Have them talk about what's going on in their lives. Is there something that's triggering it? Is there something happening at school? Are they being bullied? Um, is there a teacher they don't like? Is there something they're fearing, like an upcoming, um, I don't know, an upcoming test or something? And is there something at school they're fearing or something um, to do with their friends or they feel like they're not fitting in? That Things like that can show up as monsters and irrational fears. So encourage them to talk. Encourage them to express themselves. That is so important. The other thing with kids to watch out for is they misinterpret things. So always, always, always assure them that you love them unconditionally and that they are amazing. Because sometimes, let's say, if you're having a bad day, and um, you and or you are going through a difficult time in your relationship. None of these things have anything to do with your child. But if it's a sensitive child um, and an empath child, the child will want you to feel better. The child will sense your energy and almost take it on as their responsibility to make you feel better. Be aware that some children have a tendency to do that and assure them and talk to them and say, this has nothing to do with you. Um, I still love you unconditionally and try and still be joyful in front of and with that child and don't involve your children 
in your problems because the sensitive child will really want to try to help you fix it and will almost internalize it if they can't do it for you. So just be aware of these things. Many people ask me, why do children get sick? You know, they're too young to buy into all the fears and all that I talk about. That's because children internalize other people's emotions and they misinterpret it. Often they misinterpret it and they, and they believe that they need to do something about it when they don't. So be gentle with them, talk to them, assure them. Um, and, uh, and I know somebody said that adults need to read this book. Yes, I actually agree with that. And one person commented that we need to have schools that are for sensitive children or spiritual schools. I totally agree with that, that kids need a more sensitive and spiritual upbringing. Not only that, I even believe that we need a, a, a health care system that's more catered for sensitive people. I know that every health problem that I have had in my life, including the recent burnout, has not been something because of toxins that I have ingested or it's not been a random, I'm a victim of, of um, disease, none, none of it. Even I'm talking about the terminal cancer I had 16 years ago. None of it was because of that. All of it was because I internalized emotions because I am a sensitive human being. And I have had to embrace that and work with that, and that's what's made it easier for me in understanding that, yes, I am very sensitive. And no matter what people tell me, even when people say, oh, don't be so sensitive, you really should be more aware of all the problems in the world and, and this that's going on and la, 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 and you of all people shouldn't get affected. You've been to the other side and back. People can say what they want, but I am sensitive, very sensitive. And I accept it. And today I accept it wholeheartedly and 100%. And that is what has helped me the most. That full acceptance is what has actually accepted me to feel so joyful and positive about life, especially about my life. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I can't wait to see you again soon. Oh, the book is available now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and I don't know if I finished that thought process. And so, therefore, I think there should be more um, healthcare centers targeted for sensitive people where everybody that works there understands that the people who are in here have got their physical illnesses because they're sensitive, not because they're sick, not because some, they're a victim of some random disease and not because of their genes. It's because they're sensitive. That's why they internalized everything. Okay, that was my sermon for today. You emphasizing about the sanctuary there. You went yes. to the sanctuary world, like, what am I doing? Yeah. Yes, I was fantasizing about the sanctuary. One day I want to create such a venue, such a healthcare system, my sanctuary where sensitive people get treated. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and I'll see you all soon.